But first, the obvious news of the weekend. The front page of the Herald Sun on Saturday was one of the most profound headlines I have seen in a long time. Bullied and broken, wrecked by labour, her heart gave out. An account was given by a union official who was very close to Kimberley Kitching. The story that she wrote was in chapter and verse about the treatment that she had got from the group known as the Mean Girls, but more importantly, the people who would be the next finance minister of the country, the person in charge of the borders, or the next foreign minister. We've spent a lot of time in the past couple of years being told a version of believe all women or we need to change the culture in Parliament House. Well, the culture is broken and it's been broken on all sides for a long time. It's very easy for the apologist to say, well, this is the way politics is played and there's opportunism and all of this. That's garbage. In death, Kimberly Kitching has given us an insight into the frauds who claim to speak from the heart, but really the past couple of years they've been using their political head to try to advance their own position without cleaning up their own house. A perfect example about the Labor Party's unwillingness to clean up its own house has been the deputy leader, Richard Miles. Now, remember, Kimberley Kitching went to Richard Miles and told of the behaviour of the future foreign minister, the future home affairs minister, and the future finance minister. Literally, once you throw in Anthony Albanese, Penny Wong, Christina Keneally, Richard Miles are the four people who lead the Labor Party federally. He knew what the problem was. Yet, as we showed you last week, he tried to be all indignant about questions about this in Tasmania. And again, well done to Alison Langdon for following up, maintaining the rage, demanding the questions, holding Labor to their own standards when the deputy leader thought he would get a much softer run on breakfast television. He didn't. Did you know she was unhappy? Did she raise allegations of bullying with you? Yeah, I, I, I'm, again, I'm just not going to walk down that path. I, th um, I think it is it, a, a it, fair question at this, at, the, at, this, at this point, Richard, that, that you have to answer. I mean, um, Kimberley uh, told I... friends that you were going to help her after she was dumped from that committee. Is that something you did? Yeah. Um, again, I'm not going to walk down that, that path. And then, as you know, Albo hid from questions about this while in South Australia, the day after he made his comments where he was all indignant about the term mean girls. Remember the term used by Kimberley Kitching about the future foreign minister, finance minister and home affairs minister. Half of the leadership team of a potential Labor government he took no questions. Instead, he tried to ride on the coattails of Peter Malinowskis, who is now the Premier of South Australia. When eventually he opened his mouth, hoping that on a Saturday afternoon, this would all get swamped by the coverage of the state election, Anthony Albanese yet again said no need for an inquiry. Um, given that they are hurting and they are calling for inquiry, why can't it be tested for an inquiry? They are serious allegations. Well, if... We have a process established, which is which is there. The statements that have been made have been answered uh, by uh, the people who have been directed to. When people have raised issues with me, I've directed it. I've, I've seen, for example, the issue of, and, and I do think this is, I've got to say, I think this is an unfortunate discussion to have two days before a, a, a funeral of someone but the media continue to ask these questions, uh, and that is un unfortunate, but I understand that people are also pushing uh, the, these issues. What? That's his answer to the situation, a situation that his deputy leader, that he potential deputy prime minister knew about. Is that somehow it's the media's fault for asking about it? This is the bloke who remember, as we showed you last week, just a few weeks ago, was all about... We must walk the talk. Instead, he's walking away from it in the hope that the talk moves on to something else. And there are active members of the press gallery who will try to do everything they can to change the subject in the next few days. They may well be successful. But I don't care. This matters. Because if the polls are right, these are the people who run the country. And you've seen 
that when it gets tough, they don't want to talk about it. They want to pretend that there's something else to look at, that this isn't serious enough. Of course, that's garbage. There are now Labor MPs who say that there should be an inquiry. And of course, there should be. But there should be an inquiry that we actually get to see the results of before the election. We should be able to hear what is said to that inquiry before the election. But most likely, the media strategy here is going to be to announce something in the next couple of days and then never talk about it again because we're bound by the inquiry, as if it's some sort of legal process that a jury will get involved with. When previous situations that have involved potential juries, they're more than happy to keep talking about an issue if they think it does damage to the side of politics that they don't like. Now, interestingly, that was yesterday. He was today where each way Albo was holding the line. I've got to say, I think this is an unfortunate discussion to have two days before a, a, a funeral of someone, but the media continue to ask these questions uh, and that is un, uh, unfortunate. Sorry, I apologise on my timeline. That again was from yesterday. The Prime Minister, who of course has been railed against by the future Foreign Minister, Finance Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, Prime Minister and Home Affairs Minister, that he must get his house in order at all times, well, he understandably says, what about you? When will you walk the talk, Albo? The reports that I have seen uh, of members of the Labor Party, Labor members of Parliament, senators, uh, members of the union movement, um, coming forward and making some very, very serious allegations against uh, not only um, the, the leadership uh, uh, within the Senate of the Labor Party, but more broadly in terms of what involvement um, there has been in turning the other way by the Leader of the Opposition. Well, the, the Labor Party was always very quick to, to accuse, but when they have to address the, these very serious allegations themselves, well, they're very hard to find. I mean, they're living in glass houses, some might say even a crystal cathedral on these things, where they're pretty quick uh, to throw stones. But when it comes to facing up to issues in their own party and addressing what are very serious allegations, and I'm not in any position to, to know the veracity of those things, um, these are things that the Leader of the Opposition, that Anthony Albanese has to face up to. I mean, the campaign hasn't even begun, and already when he gets hard questions, he goes running. And much of the media have been happy with that. Remember the conversation that happened on Radio National with its breakfast host and the award-winning person from the Turnbull Times who turned around and said, oh, this is all a bit uncomfortable. We shouldn't be talking about it. It's all just a News Corp thing. Bullshit. These people are willing to walk past accountability and that's before they potentially are even anywhere near government. What does that tell you? about when there's going to be real problems, when they're really in charge. Penny Wong is the one who has been speaking most publicly about this. Instead, the potential person in charge of our borders, Christina Keneally, she hides behind a statement. Katie Gallagher gave a radio interview, but again, hides behind a statement. All of that is media strategy. Offer as little as possible in the hope that we just move on. Penny Wong, of course, wasn't even going to go to Kimberley Kitchick's funeral tomorrow. Remember this last week? Uh, I, I'm simply not going to engage uh, in commentary about some of the allegations which have been raised, even if, if I and others disagree with them. And will you attend Kimberley Kitchen's funeral? Uh, look, uh, I will um, look at whether I can. I currently have an engagement in the Northern Territory for, with some First Nations communities. Should the leader attend as well? Well, that's, look, this, this is, I really think, uh, there is politics and there is um, humanity. What does it tell you that Penny Wong was hiding behind First Nations people when the reality of what she was doing was she was going to, among other things, a fundraiser for the Labor Party in Darwin? She had no plans on going to the funeral. But for obvious reasons, she's now going to go, and I'll leave you to decide what you think those obvious reasons are, and now she is openly involved in commentary on this situation. 
did you bully and harass Kimberly Kitching? No, I did not. I do think, and I have thought through this last week, and there's been a lot of things said, a lot of claims made, a lot of views shared. I do think there are times where politics, you know, should take a back seat. Did you say to her, well, if you had children, you might understand why there is a climate emergency? Well, the, the, they're not precisely the words I said, but... And this is... I, no, 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 let me, let me, let me, please, let me. Um, I, I... My motivation in that exchange wasn't to have a... wasn't to personally attack her. Uh, my motivation was to express the distress that many children feel about climate change. What does it tell you when somebody is apparently speaking from the heart but can't look somebody in the eye and defend themselves in her position because she knows she can't? And it is interesting how sensitive she is about the matters to do after somebody has passed. When she was more than willing to play her part into calls for a coronial investigation into the exact circumstances of the woman who had accusations against Christian Porter. This was reporting from last year in news.com.au, where Penny Wong was quoted as saying this, the death of the woman who made the allegation is a tragedy and devastating for everyone who knew and loved her. The woman and her family and friends have been in my thoughts throughout. Here's the bit that matters even more. I issued the statement in the interest of transparency and in the hope that appropriate action is taken to examine her allegation. So Beyond the Grave is selective for Penny Wong. The circumstances of her death and what can and should be done to keep people safe and save lives in the future. Now, again, there are people in the media who will try to change the subject. They will do everything they can to do it this week and they'll largely probably be successful. We know the media have already decided that the election result is beyond doubt and this little bump in the road must not divert from the overall theme, including the bizarre writings. And if you have the stomach to go through what feels like thousands of words of gibberish, what Catherine Murphy wrote in The Guardian, that all of this was somehow grotesque. It was grotesque and nasty because all of this was unpleasant because, of course, it involved somebody whose life had been lost. Now, not for a second have I even inferred that the pressure on Kimberly Kitching was the result of why she died. I focused on the allegations. I focused on wanting to investigate them, just as they have said about previous ones in the past. But you see, that's too uncomfortable for them because they know what will be discovered, what they are willing to walk past. Now, interestingly here, believe it or not, even Laura Tingle at the ABC can recognise what the problem is here. You see, she wrote in an opinion piece that explains some of the brutality behind all of this and the brutality that's being played out inside internal labour factionalism, blah, 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 distraction, distraction, smokescreen, smokescreen. But what about this paragraph? There has been a refusal by federal figures this week to discuss Kitching's death, which may have started at looking respectful, but which has increasingly just looked like an alibi for not responding to allegations that have been made about her treatment. Oh, yeah, and one more person who demanded full accountability even after somebody had passed away? One year ago, Albo. Uh, you have this tragic death. Uh, you have uh, a range of people who were informed by this woman about uh, what she says occurred at the time. And uh, at the moment, uh, you have a circumstance whereby uh, you are having inquiries. We saw it yesterday. There was an inquiry by the media to the Attorney General shown live on national TV mm. and in some cases broadcast on radio. Now, that's not the way 
to deal with uh, with this issue. Uh, the way to deal with it is to have an appropriate inquiry and for the Prime Minister uh, to be able to satisfy himself and satisfy the Australian people uh, that Christian Porter is a fit and proper person to continue in the role that he has. In the worst possible way, that's each way, Albo.